Well, welcome to another um, Sanitation Ministries recording. Um, and my name is David Carlson. I'll be just talking briefly about more containment um, and something that I have observed that has been really undermined. And that is the use of masks. Now, a lot has been said about masks and uh, we want to leave them for healthcare workers and so on. And that's totally understandable. And, but I'll just make a few points here about what masks are and why they're so important. We can just try to dig into it and then we can discover that as you can see in the photograph there, uh, there is a homemade mask that somebody was able to uh, make for themselves and perhaps for others. Now, firstly, um, Masks are important, not because I'm trying to say they are important, but because a professional microbiologist and doctor from Hong Kong's Queen Mary's Hospital, an absolute expert in this stuff, has asserted strongly that everybody must wear a mask. And we'll go through that and I'll show you what he says uh, as we continue in a little bit. Um, but firstly, just about masks and what the reservation is for them. Um, I remember working in a in an environment where there was toxic fumes, and I was always trained to wear a mask for workplace hazardous material information training that we had done. And uh, in the environment that I worked in, uh, very few people would actually wear the mask. I remember seeing people working with deadly toxic chemicals and so on without a mask. And um, they just were uh, careless or had complacency. And maybe it was because the masks were uncomfortable. Um, and for the most part, they are. But it's much better than an infection or contracting a disease or getting a toxic chemical into your body that builds up and causes um, major problems later on. And one thing I've noticed is that very few people are talking about masks and and it's grossly undermined my opinion in our own culture uh, and in the middle of this pandemic we are going through. What this doctor said, and just let you listen in and we can review and recap it, okay? So it is very important for us to control it. Everybody, once you're outside your home, on public transports, to workplaces, you must wear a mask. You must do frequent hand hygiene and don't go near the hospital unless it's absolutely necessary. And of course, for healthcare. Okay, let's review this again. Outside your home, on public transports, to workplaces, you must wear a mask. You must you wear must a mask. Hand hygiene and don't go near the hospital unless it's absolutely necessary. And of course, for healthcare workers, it's very important that. All doctors and nurses must comply with infection control procedures. If the control measures are not working, or if the control measures are not being complied, then the trajectory could be very alarming. I just want to say that uh, don't be complacent. We must treat it extremely seriously. If you make a wrong decision in this Asian time, like what has happened in Wuhan, why not Hong Kong or other cities become Wuhan? Perfectly possible. So that was the doctor talking about the unspeakable importance of masks. And you notice in priority that masks were the first priority over hand hygiene. And I agree with them. I would say that wearing a mask in public, crowded areas, is more important than hand hygiene. Anybody can wash their hands after they've gone onto a bus or in a shopping mall. But... What can I do if I've inhaled somebody else's droplets or aerosol that has been infected with a virus because I had no mask on? I can't wash my lungs. So you get one chance to prevent um, respiratory infection uh, by wearing a mask, and it is important. So what we'll just briefly cover here is why public needs to wear masks, how to get a mask or make one, and protecting yourself means that you protect healthcare workers, okay? Every last case that we can prevent of infection is one less case that the healthcare workers will have to be inundated with and risking a overflow and a point where they cannot take anybody else. 
And wearing masks also means that people can get back to work. I personally would feel totally comfortable um, going into a clothing store or the like to do business um, if I had a mask on and so did the cashier or the shopkeeper. So it would help people um, get back to work and get the economy going again if everybody could wear this containment measure. What do we mean by aerosol? There's one small example right there, okay? Um, sometimes I've had allergies and been in a controlled environment and I can see absolutely how much spray comes out from a sneeze. But anyways, anybody from even speaking will have a certain amount of these aerosol drops that go out. Just speaking is enough to shed this virus, okay? Never mind a cough or a sneeze. Um, how many have ever been close to somebody and they're talking really close to your face and you can actually feel droplets uh, land on your face? Imagine how much we don't feel from people that have been talking even in a enclosed room or a shop or the like. What does a mask do? Number one, if you are infected and perhaps asymptomatic, maybe you're one of the young millennials that um, can be totally loaded with this virus and be asymptomatic because your immune system is suppressing it and containing it. Wearing a mask will help that person from spreading it to others. So it can contain it within yourself. Because when you talk, you're not spraying at the same time. You're just spraying into the mask. If there are droplets contaminated in the air floating around in a shop or enclosed area, this is also, of course, a barrier to stop you breathing it in. And that mask right there on the photograph has is a homemade one. Some of them have several layers in them and different filters built within them, and they are very, very effective, just as effective as the 90. And it's also been said that it prevents you from touching entryways of your face and lets people know around you how serious a situation is. That's why I recommend that all protective services like police, fire, and medics use a mask anywhere they are, even driving down the road, just to let people know how serious of a situation we're facing and so they may not grow complacent. So it has a psychological effect as well. Everybody's heard of social distancing. Why? Why do they want to have this social distancing now? To distance yourself from droplet infections. But evidence that we now have established shows that aerosol, which is very, very fine droplets, can linger in the air for hours. Okay? This is how we've been seeing spreading through uh, cruise ships and so forth. Masks will further help contain the spread. There is no question, no denying that. Okay, even for people that are very skeptical about masks, if we could lower even by 5%, that is a huge number for the healthcare system. So, um, but it, I would say it's way, way higher than that in terms of how much it will help. And then one of the things I learned on the report that we'll go through is one millimeter of saliva can have millions of viruses in it, just for your information. So masks, especially homemade ones that people can conjure up. Um, and I actually had was wearing a homemade one today for the first time as I went out uh, to do a pickup delivery of uh, from a local kitchen and I wore the mask, we will all accept it's not 100% um, in the same way that an umbrella may not keep you 100% dry in a rainstorm, right? But it will help, okay? The same with any mask, even a scarf around your face. Anything would help. Anything is better than nothing when we're talking about spreading this disease. And uh, as I mentioned, protect the healthcare workers by protecting yourself and your family by education and by um, containment. And once you can make this shopping more comfortable, um, this will help the community and the economy and shopkeepers get back to work by lowering the risk. And if we can lower the risk, we will be able to um, avoid 
serious draconian measures like lockdown type of situations, which we're seeing in the world, if we all abide by these containment procedures, um, the numbers won't justify draconian measures in our own communities. And that's why I'm really trying to get this out and really trying to assert this um, so we don't have to go there. And let's do a review of the question and answers with this um, Hong Kong microbiologist, Dr. Yen Kwok Young, if I got it right, um, who helped confirm that the coronavirus is human spread initially when it was going on in Wuhan. So here's the reports from the Straits Times, which I found um, ever since he made that, that, time mo uh, that Time magazine presentation, I really connected with him and I was trying to find where he was and I couldn't find him on some Google searches. And I just tried last week and lo and behold, he showed up on this article here out of Singapore, The Straits Times. Um, and uh, and there he is. Uh, and they did a, um, uh, a question and answer session with him. And so it's a great read. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, but it gives you a bit of a history of, of where where it came from. And he talked about the wet markets in uh, China and some of the um, grossly contaminated uh, areas where there's blood and rats around in some of the areas. And it's an extensive article. You'll really enjoy it. Um, but uh, he talks about his interview with Beijing. He was sent into Wuhan as part of a task force to assess the risk uh, in that area and was one of the uh, original whistleblowers as well, talking about locking down the city of Wuhan, as we recall. And so I'll just skip down. We're talking about containment, so I'll, I'll skip down to what he, what he talked about uh, in containment. There we are. There we have it. Given this novel coronavirus is so cunning, with probably many infected but, but asymptomatic, so no symptoms, moving around in communities how should ordinary citizens protect themselves very direct question this is exactly what we're talking about what does he say there you have it we can only rely on telling everyone to wear a mask unspeakably important yet the cdc and the bc cdc have not emphasized or asserted this point first wear a mask next hand hygiene using alcoholic sanitizer. And here he talks about, I had to call everyone to wear a mask in Beijing, but many people disagreed saying the World Health Organization, they didn't need to wear a mask. They go into crowded places. Nevertheless, if people wear a mask only when they feel sick, then the eight infected people in Diamond Princess would have transmitted to others because they were feeling uncomfortable, because they were not feeling uncomfortable. Wear a mask to protect not only yourself, but others. Because if you are infected but asymptomatic, you could still stop the spread by wearing a mask. I don't understand why this is some hidden secret or whatever, but this is what we need to be doing right now. And nobody's doing it. And um, we could drastically prevent um, further infections if we just listen to the doctor and listen to this guy. And so he talks about the infection rates. Uh, in Hong Kong, which are substantially lower than other parts of the world, and because they took these measures, and uh, and he goes on about uh, Hong Kong having to be returning to their offices and and kind of where we're going to be going next, and uh, has some very good pointers in there uh, for you to read and go through with this spreading pandemic. And um, you know, you go there and you'll find that most everybody is in a mask. And so keep have that good read and then we'll you'll definitely see it is worth it. So you must wear a mask, as the doctor says. And I did a search on Amazon, not expecting to find anything for sale, thinking everything's back ordered or backlogged. And I was able to actually find uh, a pack of three reusable masks with filters that can filter out viruses and bacteria and a pack of three for $10. And I'll leave you a link to there um, that you can uh, refer to as well. And as well, we can make our own. And I actually have done that and studied that too, even thinking about bringing out the sewing machine and giving a crack at it. 
um, on second thought, the fact is, is that there's companies out there that can produce these things by the millions out there ready, willing to sell you them um, that are better designed and that will protect you better uh, than ones we could try to scramble up on our own. I'm just saying that as someone who is not a seamstress by any stretch of the imagination and uh, lacks kind of the sewing skills. Uh, but uh, that would be the first choice uh, for doing that. If you do have that ability, please, by all means, um, there are tons of links on YouTube where you can uh, make a mask that is equal or better than an N90 mask that they recommend for healthcare professionals. And there's movements going around trying to supply hospitals with these. Get involved with that um, and uh, make sure that uh, people have access to a mask. When would you wear one? I would personally wear one when doing shopping in a shopping mall, doing my supply runs once every two weeks or when I'm in any kind of other area where there's crowded. Would you wear it on the street? I feel pretty safe on the street, but you can never be too careful. Why not wear it when you're even going down a street and there's people crowding around and stuff like that. So, um, and then uh, given that it's reusable, it can be simply laundered and cleaned and recycled. So thank you very much for joining us. Our goal at Sanditon Ministries is to help other people in proactive ways uh, as believers in the community, as those who are following the Lord Jesus, we want to be involved in helping our community, involved in healing it, giving the light of the gospel of hope in Christ Jesus our Lord, and uh, making that our mark to help one another.